गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सॉरी फॉर डिले ड्यू टू सम टेक्निकल ब्लिसेस ए वार्म वेलकम टू द सेकेंड क्वार्टर एंड हाफ ईयर एंड थर्टी एथ सेप्टेम्बर ट्वेंटी थ्री अर्निंग कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल ऑफ द कंपनी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग दिस कॉल होप यू ऑल हैव गॉन थ्रू द रिजल्ट एंड द इन्वेस्टर प्रेजेंटेशन अवेलेबल ऑन आवर वेबसाइट एंड एक्सचेंजेस before we dive into the financial performance for this quarter and open up the floor for the question and answer sessions we would like to briefly touch upon the economic and industry outlook global growth is forecasted to slow down in calendar year 23 and 24 as projected the global outlook is outlook is reinforced by ongoing consumer dynamism in the us but faces pressures from china Worsening property crisis, tight policy stance all around the world, the consequences of Russia's war in Ukraine, and the most recent conflict of Israel and Hamas, and growing geo-economic fragmentation. Despite a challenging global environment, the Asia and Pacific region remain a relative brighter spot. It is which put it on track to contribute about two thirds of global growth this year. Headline inflation has declined from post-pandemic peak as global commodity prices have receded and monetary policy has taken effect. India's economic growth remains robust, driven by large public capital expenditure, push, and resilient domestic demand. As far as Indian pharmaceutical sector is concerned, U.S. continues to show. Strong momentum led by easing of elevated price erosion, easing of input costs on raw materials, and price hike benefit by an LEM drugs by government along the 12.1 percent price increase since April 23. The recent deliberation on guidelines by OT by central government on OTC medicines will increase access to. such medicines we expect growing structural global opportunity and tailwind flowing into indian api players over the longer horizon for the specialty chemical sector pricing pressure has been persistent with chinese dumping of chemical into a four market globally to overcome their domestic weakness overall demand will be affected by the ongoing economic crisis in especially in europe There has been marginal decline in raw material prices, but volatility persists with crude prices resuming their northward journey. With this update, I now hand over the call to my colleague Mr. Pradeep, who will briefly who will brief you about the financial performance for the quarter and first half of the financial year 2024. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mahajan. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining us today to discuss our performance for the second quarter and how we are under the date 23. I will take you to the financial highlights for the second quarter and first half of the financial year 23. The total income of the company in the second quarter of financial year 24 stood at rupees 552 crore. Earned gains rupees 546 crore in the first quarter of the financial year 23, and rupees 570 crore in the second quarter of the financial year 23. In the previous quarter, and June 23. Now, Bita, for the quarter one, rupees 71 crore, earned gains rupees 37 crore in the first quarter quarter of the financial year 23, and rupees 80 crore. In the previous quarter and June 23, meter margin for the quarter improved by 620 basis points to 12.9 percent, as against 6.7 percent cost from the quarter of financial year 23, and 14 percent in the previous quarter and June 23. The next profit in the second quarter of financial year 24 was rupees. At the end, we are as gains rupees 15 crore in the first quarter of the last year, 
and rupees 46 CR in the previous quarter ended June 23. With easing of input cost and better realization, EBIT margin for the pharmaceutical segment was at 15% in quarter T2 of financial year 24, while EBIT margin for the specialty chemical segment was 1.5% in quarter 2. The capex for the first stop of the current fiscal is Rs. 114 CR, whereas it was Rs. 211 CR for the full financial year 23. With this, we open the floor for a question and answer session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ketan from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. I wanted to know what will be the revenue and margin guidance for H2 FY24 and FY25 and 26. The company is expecting a revenue growth of around 10% uh, every year. So we still maintain that uh, revenue guidance for upcoming uh, FY24 and FY25. Okay, and uh, uh, margins will be how much? Margin, the company has planned for around margin of 15 to 7% beta margins. Uh, for, uh, uh, for H2 or for FY24 and 5 Okay, so uh, right now we are at some 13 to 14% margin for the first half. So yeah. can we expect? A rate of 18 to 20% sort of to cover up for FY24 from say, Q3 can be expected. There are some products product which we are manufacturing. The prices were drastically down in the September quarter, which we expected as a demand is there. So we expect that the prices may um, likely to improve to some extent, which will increase our bottom line. Okay, and that will happen in Q3 or Q4? Yeah, we expect that. Sorry, I did not get catch that. By when do you say will that happen? No, basically uh, Q3 will definitely be, um, I think it will be similar to the Q2, but uh, Q4 will be better than the Q3. So the most of the recovery will come into the Q4. Okay, got it. And uh, what was the paracetamol utilization in this quarter? And are we planning for an expansion on that side? For paracetamol, we are running at around 95% capacity, um, which we have recently increased to 18, from 1800 to 3600. But the prices were drastically down during that quarter, this June, uh, June and September quarter. But uh, uh, capacity utilization is running at 90-95%. Okay. Uh and uh, I mean, if we are using 95, then are we planning for further expansion? As of now, we are considering various avenues, and uh, may uh, come come back with you within next quarter. Okay, got it. And one last question: um, I just wanted to know if we are selling any non-ibuprofen products in Europe. Yeah, we have already uh, got the approval from um, various European authorities. And a small amount of food has been started. Okay, that has okay. been started. Okay. One, one or two quarter more to 
increase the quantity in euro. Okay, so I guess that will also support our margin. Is that understanding, sir? Yeah, mm -hmm. we will get the, some uh, so more. Uh, uh, we will sell more in a uh, four market these non-IBU uh, baskets rather than selling domestically. Okay, got it. That was very helpful. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neelam Punjabi from Purpi Judithi. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, so my first question is on our ibuprofen business. Uh, could you help us understand what's the capacity utilization in the uh, during the quarter? Uh, the capacity utilization of our uh, ibuprofen remained at stable at around ninety percent. Around ninety percent during the quarter. Okay. And our IBU business has been pretty strong with almost like 29% FIY growth uh, during the first half. So are we expecting the revenues to sustain in the second half as well? We hope uh, it will be sustained. Got it. What's the average pricing uh, that we've realized in ibuprofen during the quarter? It was remained at the same level which was in June quarter. And also remains in the September quarter at the same level. Understood. Our uh, second more substantial increase or decrease in the prices. Got it. Uh, so for our other API business, um, it's been down almost by 13% in Q2. So is it largely because of price decline uh, in uh, Paris at Mall? Yeah. Uh, it is primarily due to the our capacity of uh, ibuprofen, uh, sorry, this uh, paracetamol, and uh, sale has increased substantially, but the price has eroded by more than 80 percent. So it back to our uh, top line uh, in terms of uh, reduction in uh, prices of paracetamol. To some extent, metformin prices are also corrected to some extent. Could you quantify how much has the paracetamol and metformin prices declined uh, respectively on a YY basis? The uh, whole, it was about 25%. And uh, in case of metformin, I think it was... Uh, 6 to 10%. 6 to 10%. Got it, okay. Um, any uh, new products? Price fall in the paracetamol is on an average basis. However, there has been very fluctuating prices during the whole quarter. So, what uh, Pradeep ji is told about is the average price reduction, if we say during the whole quarter as compared to the last quarter. Got it. And since you mentioned that the capacity uh, utilization has gone up, is it fair to assume? Volume growth in both of these molecules has been uh, a decent, like single digit bio -wise. Volume growth in paracetamol, yes, it is obviously there. And what other molecule you are asking? Metformin. I think it's static, it's stable. Stable, got it. Um, and um, you had mentioned that uh, we would want to start uh, exporting to regulated markets uh, in a couple of quarters. So any progress around that, if you could just share an update? A little bit of increase in export from the European market has already been started, and we are expecting that it will be increased further. Got it. Okay. Our um, sample are already floating in various markets, and various customers are interested, has shown their interest, and we are expecting increase in volume for exporting Europe or our non IBU segment. Got it. Uh, so if we had given a guidance of around 500 to 550 crores of other API revenues in FI24, and given the first half is at, at around 236 crores, are we confident on maintaining this guidance? Because that would imply a, almost like a low teens kind of growth in the second half. Uh, yeah, Milanji, surely we are very uh, hopeful about uh, that meeting are the targets of around 500 to uh, uh, 500 non-IBU business in this financial year. 
and I think uh, we are approximately half of the way. So little bit is to be uh, better recovery will be there in the third quarter and uh, fourth quarter. Maybe we can cross the 500 mark. Got it. And uh, sir, so, uh, for the next two, two to three years for this other API business, could you get, give us a directional, uh, you know, uh, guidance as to what kind of growth rates can we expect for non-ibuprofen APIs for FI 25, 26 next two years? We are we are uh, uh, having the similar guidance we uh, given in the last quarter. We expect around uh, 20 to 25 percent uh, non-IBU business growth for the next two to three financial year. Great, that's helpful. Uh, sec next on the chemicals business. So this uh, uh, you know top line has been flat on a YOY basis, and as I look at your uh, EBIT margins uh, for this segment, it has come off during the quarter. So could you uh, help us understand what's the reason behind it? And, you know, we had also uh, a commercialized acetic anhydride facility during the quarter. So, uh, uh, I mean, what's the sales of that and why uh, has it not reflected in the overall segment numbers? Mm. First of all, uh, regarding ethyl acetate, ethyl acetate, the major arm deal for ethyl acetate is the acetic acid which was again very volatile in the, this quarter, especially in the September month. So um, that is uh, one of the reasons. Plus prices almost remain the same, which was earlier in the month of, in the quarter of June itself. But the volatility in raw material prices affected the price, uh, the um, bottom line of ethyl acetate. As regarding acetic and hydride, we have commercialized it and started selling it, selling to the market also. Around 40% of our present production is being selling to the domestic market as we are entering to the new segment and new customers. The price, the sale is already in, in the chemical sector, shown in the chemical segment. But the, uh, the level which remains the same for the two quarter due to the reduction in prices of ethyl acetate primarily. Uh, what would be our current uh, realizations in the ethyl acetate? Uh, I mean, what's the price for that right now? Uh, it is around $1 to $1.1. Got it. Okay. And what's the current pricing of acetic uh, acid? That is almost mean the equivalent to uh, ethyl acetate prices. Okay, understood. Uh, lastly, on the other expenses, so this has gone up uh, to almost like 79 crores during the quarter. So are there any one-offs during the quarter or uh, what is what has led to this uh, increase in other expenses? Uh, actually, the increase in other expenses are due to power and fuel. Increase in power and fuel cost. Uh, there are uh, two, three reasons to increase in the power and fuel expenses. Uh, it is uh, due to start of operation of the asset energy. So power and the steam and gas uh, consumed in uh, asset energy production. And second reason is due to shutdown in the boiler. This leads to pur purchase of power from outside at high cost. This is uh, one of the reasons. And uh, uh, due to seasonal effect also in the second quarter, the utility cost is on the higher side due to this uh, major increase in power and fuel expenses in the second quarter. Okay. So we can expect this to sustain in the coming quarters as well? I think in the coming quarter, uh, quarter it will uh, decrease. Uh, it's slightly uh, power and fuel expenses. So ultimately, it leads to decrease in the other expenses. Okay. Thank you. This is helpful. I'll get back to the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of a cause from NT Asset Management. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, hi, a couple of questions. Uh, starting with the chemical segment, the EBIT segment, EBIT margins appear to be quite low. Is that because of the internal consumption or, I mean, what's the normal kind of margins you would expect for chemicals? Uh, for internal consumption, uh, we have seen that around 80 crore have been shifted from chemical to uh, API division, which is transferred at the cost price only. Mm -hmm. That may be one of the reasons. And secondly, the, as I already explained, the prices will volatility in acetic acid prices. Which is a major but what would you expect to be the normal EBIT margins for this segment over a longer term? It is single digit, I think, not more than that. Uh, yeah, I mean, currently it's low single digit, so I mean, uh, where do you think it should be? It has been two, three years, it is around six to eight percent. Okay, I understand. And second, uh, I was just curious that you report that you have 35% uh, global market share for ibuprofen, but your share of sales to regulated markets is uh, relatively small. So how does the dynamics work in terms of your market share for regulated versus non-regulated markets? Mm, okay, except the U.S. market where we have very low uh, market share, we are sell selling our ibuprofen since quite a long period in Europe and Latin America and other regulated markets where we hold a uh, good market share in uh, regulated uh, except U.S. But now we are trying uh, exploring various opportunities, various uh, uh, floors of the market in U.S. US also and uh, may start to increase some share in U.S. also. But till date, our more share of a float is from regulated market is from Europe and Latin America. Okay. Any particular constraints you have faced in the past for the U.S. market? No, no, no constraint, no constraint. We are okay. getting good, good net net sales realization from Europe market rather than getting them from U.S. market. Understand. And who are the key competitors in U.S. if you could mention? There is one major player uh, which, are produce, which is producing in U.S. that is BASF. All right. Understand. And also finally, could you talk about your capacity expansion plans which are going on now or say likely to be for the next two to three years? We have recently added one product in our chemical segment. That is Astic and The project was completed in the June quarter itself. And uh, uh, now we are uh, increasing some capex on our infrastructures, uh, additional infrastructure like uh, boilers, which we have recently added one more, and uh, more uh, focus of infrastructure in capex on green chemistry and uh, environment. Uh, environmental uh, activities and uh, but uh, we have some plan on our growth capital both in chemical and API division which we may uh, update everyone uh, in the due course but our plan for increasing of capex company as a whole around 200 crore almost uh, 200 crore in this financial year and uh, same likely in the upcoming two years. Mm, understand. Thank you. And, and that includes the capacity expansion for ibuprofen as well, because you said you're operating at almost 90% utilization. Capacity was expanded in um, around four years back, and we are still uh, playing on the debt capacity of 12,000 tons. We have not increased the capacity since the last three, four years. Okay, but do you plan to going forward? As of now, we are not thinking, but we are more focusing on an IBU segment. But if any situation comes, we are ready to expand immediately with backward integration. We have sufficient scope for us to increase in a, in a very short period. I understand. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Mohammed Ayaz, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations for the good reason here on you, and thanks for the opportunity. So, uh, I just want to ask you one thing. If we consider a one base quarter and just one bad quarter, what that quarter should be, according to your business? Sir, can you repeat your question? Base quarter? Uh, if, if I ask you one uh, one base quarter and one bad quarter, what, what quarter that would be? Means, uh, one, two, three, four, like that September quarter or... So, I mean, best quarter, every quarter we hope that they will be better than the previous quarter, but I can say the uh, bad quarter was the Q2 last financial year, was the bottom down where we bottom down. And Q3 last financial year was better, the Q4 was also better, Q1 and the Q2 are also better considering the overall the market situation of our industry. So, uh, we cannot say this is the best, but we can identify the second quarter of the last fiscal year was not good. Okay. In terms of seasonality, uh, uh, June, September, December, and March, according to your business... We're talking nature, about uh, uh, good quarter and the bad quarter within a, uh, one financial year? Uh, yes. Yes. So, I like that, uh, if, if I say in that respect, every financial year, Q2 remains uh, on the lower side and the Q4 remains on the higher side. Uh, so another question is, we have filed a 12 BMS for the uh, 12 BMS, I think, and the 5 QET. So I need me to ask, how many times it takes to get approval for that uh, BMS? How much? Time it takes from the regulated authority to, to get approval for DMF. Basically, basically, this is the process where we file a DMF. Our DMF is uh, six already evaluated and uh, ready for references, whereas uh, six DMF are under evaluation process. So if we get uh, DMF uh, for a few drugs, I think we have only one DMF for IG profile, am I right? We have filed uh, 12 DMFs, yes. but we get the uh, approval of the product that is IG reform since 2005-15. And metformin is also approved by the uh, without having the inspection done by the uh, U.S. FDA. Uh, so in any case, uh, any drug regulator is looking for uh, importing from us that that will be considered as the U.S. FDA approved. Okay, metformin is uh, by body study. That, okay, that so is available. Uh, available. This is for all the manufacturer who wish to buy uh, uh, metformin from us also. So, what is the difference between the DMF margins and the normal margins? The process, process is that like we follow the DMF and then the regulator uh, follows the ANDA file and when the ANDA file is approved, that ANDA has the uh, drug uh, descriptions of IUL. All these files are when approved, so there is the possibility at the end of the U.S. regulatory, either that way they, they can approve after inspection or if they think that this is not required, the facility already uh, visited by the U.S. FDA in the past and they are, they are satisfied with that, they can also approve any product without inspecting it physically. Uh, what are the margin difference between uh, uh, normal and DMF approved drugs in uh, export and regular non non regulated margins for my like four minutes? Yeah, uh, in domestic uh, the prices are quite low, which may different uh, the prices in the regulated market increased mm, ranging from 20 percent to 50 percent also in way. It depends on the product and the product profile. Like uh, clopidogrel, uh, the prices are uh, in uh, domestically it is maybe 50 to 60 dollars, but in regulated markets prices may be going to 85 to 90 dollars. Can you repeat that again? This is just an example. 
when the, the domestic prices uh, for non-IDU portfolio, the prices increase, um, the difference between the price domestically and regulatory market may be different from 20% to 50% depending on the product. And as I give one example of floppy dogger, which in India it is being sold at 50 to 60 dollars, but in the export market, in the regulated market, it may range to 60, 80 to 90 dollars per kg. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, uh, another one question I am having. Uh, sir, any positive development from uh, CPHI Barcelona? Yeah, our, we have set up one uh, stall there and our team is uh, remained there for the whole uh, event and uh, they told us that they have uh, expected a very good response there also. And uh, I think... Uh, and in fact, there were uh, 213 companies participated for the CETA Glyptin process. Uh, and there was some uh, uh, event wherein our company was within the top five. It was, IUL process was within the top five uh, best processes, uh, which we have already procured a patent on this. So we were the finalist in that event out of in the CPHI against out of the 213 companies. That's a great, great achievement. So any update for that certificate uh, process? Are you planning to introduce a product that you take or do you send take some time? So basically, uh, uh, this depends on the market viability and the overall commercial economic viability to the company. Uh, we have got a very clean and greener process developed for the CETA Lipton, and uh, 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 we, we, we are working on it. If all these parameters, uh, avid margin and the economical is viable to the company, we will definitely uh, start this, but this is uh, just the study we have done. Nothing final decision has been taken on it so far. Sir, uh, chemical water has been uh, low in this uh, water. Uh, is there any uh, improvement we can see in Q3 and Q4 in terms of profitability? Yes, uh, sorry, but can you please repeat because your voice was echoing. We were not able to understand this. Okay. Uh, I, my question is, we have seen no profit margin in chemical sector in this quarter. Can we see any improvement in Q3 and Q4? Yeah, definitely, yes. Um, the Q3 and Q4 historically remains uh, better for the chemical uh, vertical for the company. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Neeraj, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to know, you mentioned that we we'll have a capex of approximately 200 to 250 crores for current financial year. Uh, so any guidance for future capex, let's say for next three, four years, what would be the tentative capex we have planned and what would be the breakup in terms of, uh, in terms of chemical and in API business? I mean, how much will go in chemicals and how much will go in API business? So the guidance for the next two, three years is on the similar pattern that last year we did around 200 crores, more than the 200 crores. This year we have a planning for 200 crore. Out of this 200 crore, already we incurred 115 crores. So next two to three years we are having the similar plan for having the capexes. And this capex is majorly will be in the growth capex, and uh, this may be divided into uh, in any proportionate depending on the market and the products we finalize. So this is pretty early to say that uh, uh, which uh, uh, how much capex will uh, we use in a particular product or the segment. Okay. Uh, what is our major current? part of it? Major part of it will remain towards the growth capex. Okay. Yeah. 
what would be our current spend in r and d and what would be it in terms of uh, overall revenue r and d spend would be what percentage of our overall revenue and what are the, what are our plans on r and d so uh, we are having the moderate r and d expenses uh, our r and d expenses ranges uh, from uh, 2 to 2 3% of overall uh, turnover that 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 uh, that is for the capex only r and d capex any other plans in the future to increase the r and d budget yes yes uh, we are working on it and we will come out with the appropriate announcement in this regard at an appropriate time what is the current position of cash and debt the company is totally debt free in terms of in term of loan and for the we have not raised any debt since 2017 and uh, as of now we have uh, bank balance uh, of around uh, more than 250 yeah uh, 250 crore okay any capex we have planned where we intend to raise debt as of now no because whatever the capex is we are doing for last 2 3 years also is being done through internal accruals only Okay. So going forward, in the next two three years, also we are planning that we will spend around 200 to 250 crore. Definitely, yes. Definitely, yes. We have we have uh, the projections and the estimates uh, relating to the capexes, uh, the cash generations from the businesses uh, uh, is more uh, more than what we are looking to invest into the capex. Okay. So we can say safely that in the next two three years, also we would not need any debt. No. We are already announced so many times that we are not savvy going or any going to for any substantial debt. Okay, okay, right, right. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Praveen Sharma from Sharma Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Thank you for uh, taking my question. I just wanted to understand how is the impact of Chinese economy on our business expected to be for the current quarter and for H2. Uh, for China, there is uh, like in our pharma sector segment, in especially in IGU, we are not dependent on China, and uh, for non-IGU segment. to some extent we depended on china but china play a critical role in uh, our chemical also and uh, uh, this metformin also their policies remain unknown to everyone and when when uh, they go for increasing prices or reduction in prices no one knows they impact all over industry but as we have already ordered some chemicals and uh, place the order for chemical from china of our upcoming two quarters so we are hoping that uh, we may not impact badly for import of chemicals from china for the upcoming half year okay got it got it thank you for that i also would uh, like to ask in case you could throw some color on which new products will be contributing for growth in epicta if you could give some uh, info on that as well the overall kitty of the non ibu products they are contributing and they all uh, will start contributing in a better way with the passage of time and increase in the capacity utilization so we have uh, three four products and we we also file, we are having a good amount of the filing in the regulated markets we are receiving the cp uh, we received the cp uh, during uh, the first quarter uh, for this uh, paracetamol so as in the earlier questions we responded that <clears throat> we are getting the good responses from the customers from the reg- regulated mar- market whenever uh, our exports will increase to the regulated market for the non ibu products our evita margin i mean the contribution from these 2 uh, 3 uh, non ibu products will increase or uh, to to our evita margin it will be contributed in a significant manner 
also paracetamol and metformin doing well in the market okay okay thank thank you so much for the answers i will join back in the question queue thank you welcome thank you the next question is from the line of anuj panwar from family office please go ahead yes sir thank you for the opportunity i just have two quick questions uh my first one is can we look at the margin sustaining at the current levels or improving for the rest of the year and my second question yes, is yes yes can yes, go ahead. so margin uh, what you are asking if i understood you correctly you just to she bola kaha kyaane apna call next two quarters uh, whether the margin will remain same or it will improve this is your question yes that is correct yeah so so we are very much hopeful that the margin we incur we 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 uh, we have for the 6 months will definitely improve in the next 6 months okay and uh, do we have any plans to increase the ibuprofen facility also like any plans to go beyond the 35% global market share uh, i have already discussed during the call we are in uh, as of now we have not planned for that so for obsession of i don't know but we are ready with the our obsession uh, ready with the we have already worked out when any opportunity come we may be the first to increase the capacity along with basically integrations of raw materials in my borofan but still we are running at around 90% capacity as of now we are not planned but we have worked out how to come increase the capacity within short period of maybe 6 months or 3 months we are ready okay. with that plan okay understood yes that was helpful thank you so much for your answer thank you the next question is from the line of mohammed ayas an individual investor please go ahead uh sir when can we expect uh, mr vikas with sir hot mode Uh, actually, he was, actually he was traveling uh, uh, when he was there in cphi also and uh, okay from there he was he went to uh, some client and he is expected to come back uh, tomorrow most probably so we let's wait and let's call quarter we can think about that yeah i hope uh, like to uh host we would like to love to host him in the conference call thank you sure. thank you i now hand the conference over to mr rakesh mahajan for closing comment thank you very much for joining us today and discussing our second quarter and a half year and the 30th september 2023 performance the company continues its strategic focus to diversify its revenue base with strong domestic demand in both sectors and backward backward integration the next quarter or next half year will bring in more value addition for investor and shareholder alike thank you very very much again for attending this call have a nice day thank you thank you On behalf of IOL Chemical and Pharmaceutical Limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your line thank you <laughs>